Here's a guy who's happier these days, and we'll explain why. But first, anybody remember San Diego's longest traffic light? We did a story about it. It used to be on Harbor Drive right at the airport. You wanted it to change? Well, it would be a wait, a long, long wait. Oh yeah, you could wait five minutes, you could wait five days, week. you could wait five years, and that light's not gonna change. Now, of course, if you're going the other way, it's always green. And fortunately, it was always green for the traffic on Harbor Drive. But suppose they wanted to change the light. They'd throw this switch at the Coast Guard station and get a couple of people with flashlights and orange vests out there just long enough to let the airplane go across Harbor Drive to the runway at Lindbergh Field. Remember that? Well, no more. Just to update the story, San Diego's airplane crossing is removed and a curiosity of the past. As near as I can figure, it hadn't been used since 2001 when they pulled this big C-130 right across Harbor Drive. It was a tight fit, but they made it, and it was quite a sight. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. In Chula Vista, strawberry fields forever, wouldn't that have been wonderful? This was the last holdout within the city limits of Chula Vista at the corner of 4th and Main. Well, you talk about Chula Vista, and for generations, this was it. Not a big city. No, it was agriculture, alfalfa, and celery. A lot of celery in Chula Vista. Citrus, too. Lemons went out from here to all over the country. But the city became urbanized, and buildings and streets took over where once there had been farms until none were left except this one. Until fairly recently, there was one lone holdout right at the corner of 4th and Main, and we had to do a story on it, you know. Because how long could it last there? One solitary strawberry field standing against encroaching urban pressures all around. It hung in there pretty well, but the strawberry growers were just tenants. The land was owned by a company with other ideas for it, so it wasn't forever and the strawberries are gone now. But I have to say, if you ever tasted them grown in that good Chula Vista soil, you know they were unforgettable. Oh, and a follow-up, something you really ought to see. A while back, we did a story about the old San Diego courthouse. I mean, the really old one from 1889 up until 1959 at Broadway and Front Street, maybe best known for the fact that all around on the roof were these figures statues made of zinc, Lady Liberty and her sisters, the symbols of commerce and agriculture and industry, they ended up in storage. Well, there's something else from that courthouse that's newly on display that circumstances permitting, you can go and see. Inside this building, it's 5530 Overland Avenue at the county's operations center, is a display on the first floor, and there are half a dozen just remarkable stained glass windows that were preserved from that old courthouse. Now, back in 1889, there were only 42 states, but look, here are Texas and Kansas. Imagine these bringing the sunlight into the courthouse well over a century ago. The brand new state of Washington. And here's New Jersey, Connecticut, and Illinois. Others are on display at the Hall of Justice, and you'll see one here and there in other county buildings around San Diego. But we wanted to note that they too are still around from that original courthouse. And maybe just to mention also that when the artist, John Mallon, created them, he was paid $2,000. I don't mean a piece, I mean for all of them. And finally, yes, good news about our story after somebody damaged Alonzo Horton's statue on Broadway Circle. So you can tell he used to be holding something in this old video. It was a map that somebody stole, sawed it right off. But now it's returned to the statue, a map of how the city looked back in his day. And so we wanted to let you know that all is once again well, and there was a happy ending to that story about San Diego.